In this lesson, we're going to be talking about PPP and some other layer two protocols or encapsulation protocols similar to it. Now, PPP is the point to point protocol. It's actually sort of a successor to a protocol that was called SLIP, which is serial line IP. Now, these were protocols that were used primarily when we were using things like modems for communication. And we needed protocols that were capable of setting up connections between two devices quickly and easily, and also being able to encapsulate higher layer protocols. Right here, I've got just the Wikipedia article about the point to point protocol. Just want to show you the structure of a PPP frame. You can see here in this table that we've got a protocol, and that's either one or two bytes, and that's the setting of the protocol for the data field. And by protocol, we're talking about what's actually in the payload. It's LCP, which is the link control protocol, or it's IP or IPX or Apple Talk, something like that. So then we've got the actual datagram or the information, and there's some optional padding that goes as well. So we can see that there are some different phases for PPP. There's link dead, link establishment, authentication phase. And we've also got some PPP configuration options. And this is where the protocol would actually do the setup of the connection. I'm gonna bring open our good friend Wireshark here, and I can show you a capture of some PPP frames. So you can see here, we've got a configuration request and we can pop this open here. And it says it's a link control protocol. So we've sent a PPP message out and it's actually for a link control protocol. So that's the protocol that we're sending here. So we're actually sending a configuration request. You can see that the source and the destination have been altered here. So we've got a DTE and a DCE, and that's just two ends of the connection. In the first case, we've got DTE to DCE, and then we've got DCE to DTE. And you can see they go through this negotiation process of doing the configuration request, and they'll either acknowledge it or they'll not acknowledge it or knack it. PPP is capable of doing this connection setup. But what we really want is to be able to authenticate both ends so that we know that the right people or the right users are actually making use of this service. So I've got a different capture here, and this is PPP with the extensible authentication protocol or EAP. Now you can also use the challenge handshake authentication protocol or CHAP to go along with PPP to provide the authentication. But in this case, I happen to have a packet capture here where they use EAP rather than CHAP. So we're doing the LCP setup here. You can see at the beginning, we're doing a configuration request. And there's a configuration request going the other direction. Now looks like we've set up the configuration. So we're requesting that we authenticate here. You can see it actually makes reference to RFC 3748 here. They all do. There's the identity request, and here's an identity response, and there's an identity response. We're sending the challenge. So with this, what happens is rather than sending a password across the wire, the authentication server will send a challenge. And then there's some algorithm that you go through in order to create the response to the challenge and both ends know how to create that response based on what the challenge is. So typically what happens is the authentication server will send a value and it's probably some random value. So you can see here, there's the value. Let me unhighlight that so it's a little more visible. What would typically happen is you would take that value and you would perform some sort of mathematical operation on it like perform a cryptographic hash or something like that with the password or with the username and password or with other pieces of data that are known to both ends of the conversation. So then what happens is we send the response back and you can see there's the response there. 
if the response matches what was computed on the end of the authentication server, now we've got a successful authentication. And you can see that's exactly what happens here. We've got a success to the authentication protocol, and now we can really set up the connection between the two ends. PPP is a protocol that ended up superseding this other protocol called SLIP, and they are used for doing automatic configuration of connections across primarily things like serial lines, although sometimes you'll see PPP being used in other situations like they've used PPP to help support DSL, for example. So you'll see PPPoE sometimes, which is PPP over Ethernet. It's not PPP over a serial line, which is more traditional, they're doing PPP over Ethernet in order to facilitate DSL working. You'll also sometimes see PPP over ATM, and we'll get into ATM in subsequent lessons and what ATM actually is. PPP is really a way of automatically configuring a connection between two different endpoints and doing all of the parameters around that configuration and doing authentication if authentication is actually required.